Hello everyone and welcome to another wonderful episode of The Next Issue. I'm your host, The Power Trip, and for the next two weeks we're actually going to be going over the amazing power couple of the Black Panther and his wife, or I should say former wife now, Storm. Now, King T'Challa is the ruler of Wakanda, a great and powerful country known mostly in the Marvel Universe for the fact that it's pretty much the only place you can get a metal stronger than animantium, vibranium. Now you can only imagine when your country is popular for having a metal that strong, you're going to get attacked, especially in the Marvel Universe, by several supervillains, probably on a daily basis, if not weekly. Thankfully enough, Wakanda's ruler is powered by the god of the Black Panther, or Panther God, I guess what you could call. Now, to become a Black Panther ruler, so to speak, you must, of course, be within that lineage, within that, you know, king to son to son to son to son, pass it down from generation to generation. But here's the catch. It's not like standard kingdoms where, oh, I'm born under this king, so automatically I get to be the ruler. No, you still have to pass a series of trials, and the panther god itself has to actually grant you your kingdomship, your kinghood, so to speak, along with some amazing powers and gifts that come with it. Now, T'Challa debuted back in 1966, around May, June-ish, with the Fantastic Four. So that can tell you how long he's been friends with Reed Richards, Sue Storm, and, you know, the rest of the team. And not too long after meeting them, he made a good enough impact that he was actually a member of the Avengers. Pretty soon after that, actually. Now, of course, having the powers gifted to you by a god, well, that's automatically going to give you some pretty big advantages over most supervillains. This guy has actually went toe-to-toe -to -toe with Doctor Doom several times, and that's one of the biggest bads Marvel has to throw at you. Not only that, but he had gained enough respect over the years, from being around the Avengers and helping them out so much, and being such a valiant ruler of Wakanda, that he managed to stave off, or I should say cause a ceasefire, within the civil war between Captain America and Iron Man. Now, if you're wondering why I'm kind of moving a little fast here, it's because I don't have as much time as I really like to get into with a lot of the details for this character. This this character, T'Challa, has got and has been around for so long, he's got some very amazing feats I really want to go over, which I'll definitely be covering in my article next week. But I definitely want to touch on several highlights here. That being, like I said having enough respect enough to cause the stalemate in the Civil War for a little while. Stalemate, I mean ceasefire, my apologies. And and having the technology advanced enough that it wasn't until a Phoenix-powered Namor attacked that Wakanda finally fell. And even then, it hasn't taken much for them to rebuild. They've been able to basically start, you know, it, it wasn't quite being wiped off the map per se, but Black Panther was still there standing by the end of it. And if that doesn't top it all off, well the craziest and of course newest feat coming from Marvel's latest story, Secret Wars, had Black Panther wielding the Infinity Gauntlet to take on God King Doom, which up to this point has been the most powerful villain the Marvel multiverse has ever faced. This also showed how much trust he has gained as it was Reed Richards and a more, again, this is after Avengers vs. X-Men and the Phoenix was no longer possessing Namor, but these two other beings that are normally at odds look to Black Panther to help them in this great battle and entrusted him with basically the most powerful weapon in the Marvel Universe. Now, of course, one last thing to touch upon before I have to bid farewell for this farewell for this week. Sorry, is when you think of the power couples in comics. You know, Superman, Lois Lane, 
Reed Richards and the Invisible Woman, Sue Storm. It wasn't until roughly about the time of Civil War that Black Panther really got uh, stepped into that rank by marrying one of the most powerful mutants in existence, Storm. Aurora Monroe. I know I probably just butchered the crap out of that trying to say it as fast as I could, but... When you're already empowered by a god giving you abilities, and then you're married to a being who can control the elements, nature itself, or weather, I should say, itself, this is one of those mutants that, even though they never really come out and say she's what Marvel deems an Omega-level mutant, comics have touched upon characters such as these who have these abilities to master these large elements, and what would actually happen if, say, one day they just weren't around anymore, and they've been controlling these elements for so long, it becomes, well, you're not really sure how much of it is natural phenomenon and how much is, is it is them. Uh, they've touched base on things like this with Magneto. DC did the same with uh, the Martian Manhunter during Final Crisis, whenever he died, and you got to see several villains that he has subconsciously, with his telepathy, been holding at bay, all of a sudden come back. They, as mentioned with Magneto, have actually said that you're never really sure because of how much he has mastered magnetism, how much control he may have over the Earth's magnetic fields, and the same can be said with a powerhouse such as Storm. If something were to happen with her, just how much of the the world's weather systems, after all these years of mastering her powers, does she truly control? Well, that's going to be it for me this week. Come back next week for the next issue, and read up on my article over Black Panther and Storm. I hope you enjoy it. <laughs>